How to record a vendor refund in QuickBooks Online. Hey everyone, this is Matt Holtquist with the QuickBooks University. Head over there to take advantage of the QuickBooks Masterclass we have put together. Uh, show you the four simple steps to learning QuickBooks. It's qbuniversity.org. Okay, here we are at the home screen uh, for QuickBooks Online, this sample company file. And this is recording a refund from a vendor in QuickBooks Online because this can get a little bit tricky. All right, so we're going to take an example. We're going to say there's a vendor in this sample company file called Cal Telephone. Let's assume that they send us a check or even make an electronic deposit, whatever, for $77.23. So here's what you want to do in QuickBooks Online. The first thing that you want to do, and I'm going to explain why you want to take these steps and why this is important. All right, so the first thing is we want to go to Vendor Credit. So you go up to New, you click on Vendor Credit, and we're going to say Cal Telephone. All right. Payment date 11-12, that's going to default to today's date, so you're going to put whatever uh, date that they sent you that money, and if there is some kind of reference number, you can add that here. Now, what you want to do down here in the category is you want to put the same category that you use for the bill when you got a bill for Cal Telephone, because the only way that you're going to get a credit is if you overpaid or, you know, I don't know, I've had interruptions in service where they send you a credit, a bill credit, uh, and they refund that money. Okay, so this is this example is only when you get the refund of the credit. All right, so this is a telephone expense. So the original bill from Cal Telephone would have been for telephone, for utilities telephone. And you can put a description in here, and we're going to say $77.23. Now, if this is billable to a customer, of course, you're going to click on billable and uh, put in the customer name. For this, because this is utilities, we're going to leave it blank, and we're going to record our credit. So I want to show you what this does when we go over to the vendor list. And we look at Cal Telephone. You can see we now have a negative amount due. That means we have a credit with Cal Telephone. But in this case, we didn't, they didn't leave it on the account. They sent us the refund. So they actually gave us that money. So here's how you want to clear this out. All right, go up to New. Go over to Bank Deposit. And this is true if this was electronically deposited or they sent you a check. Make sure you choose the right account, the right date, and then down here, add funds to this deposit. We're not adding any of these payments from customers. And if you need to, you can, but we're going to say Cal Telephone. So let's get that up there. Cal Telephone, the account. This is what's going to be extremely important. You want to make sure that you put in accounts payable. All right. Don't put the expense account, don't put any other account, put accounts payable because what this is going to do is offset that credit that we have under Cal Telephone. Payment method, you know, you can put in whatever it was, you can say check, you can put in the check number. We're just going to put in $77.23. All right, so let me hit tab, you'll see other funds total. So total deposit $77.23, we can hit save and close. So now when we go back to the vendor list, you'll see Cal Telephone is now zero. All right. So if we click on Cal Telephone and look at the transaction history, you're going to see here you got the vendor credit and then the deposit. If you do not do it this way, if you do not do the vendor credit and you just go to make deposit and put it against telephone expense, you will not see the transaction history here for some reason in QuickBooks Online. So you want to make sure you follow these steps. You put in the vendor credit, then you make the deposit, put it against accounts payable, and it'll bring the balance to, for Cal Telephone back to zero, and it will give you the transaction history. Well, that's it for this video, how to record a vendor refund in QuickBooks Online. If you have any questions, any comments, feel free to leave those below.